Hi there, and welcome to the 9 command episode. Sometimes you need to start playing the sample from somewhere in the middle. This is often used in drum loop samples to spare you from having different samples for different parts of the same sample. I'll demonstrate this by loading a classic drum loop from 1969. It's called Amen Beat, and I'm pretty sure you've heard of it before. It sounds like this. And first I'll set the speed and the tempo of this song to fit the breakbeat. So I'll go with F06 and F8F, that's 143 BPM. And I'll put this sample on the rows 0 and 16, like this, listen to this. So let's make this breakbeat a little more interesting. Let's say I want the snare drum on position 10 here, so first I'll put the sample here and then I'll use the 9 command to tell Projector to start playing from somewhere else in the sample. So 9 and what I'll do next is open the sampler editor to show you how this works. Now there are different methods to find this exact position from where to start playing this sample and what I'm about to show you is actually only available in the Windows and Mac clone but I'll tell you in the description below how to calculate this value on Amiga as well. I'll play this sample in a lower pitch to see where the second snare drum is played. Listen and look. Alright, so my second snare drum is played somewhere in this area. So what I'll do is I'll mark this area, show this range and if I move my pointer from left to right you can see the sample offset is changing down on the right. And the position I'm looking for is right here. It's sample offset 952. So I'll go back to my track and put the value 952 here. And you can test this value by going to the row number 10 and hitting the return key. This will only play row number 10 and nothing else. Listen to this. Perfect. But it's a little short. I have to fill this out with something. So I'll go down here, put another note here and go to the sampler. And I want this double bass drum. So I'll look for it like this. Alright, it's somewhere in this area, show the range, sample offset 944. So I'll put the 944 here. Now let's listen. Nice. And now we can change the pitch as well because the sample offset will still be the same. So I'll put a couple of notes here. Now let's find the first snare drum of this sample. Okay, so it's 9-1-B. I'll put 9-1-B on the first of these notes. 9-1-B and I'll go with 9-0-0 because as you know ProTracker has a good memory so this will just be 9-1-B all the way down here. Listen. Perfect. Now let's see how this looks in the sampler. I'll hit play and have a look. Alright, so that was kind of cool. Uh, next I'm going to show you how to do a time stretch. So I'll clear my song, but I'll keep my sample to show you this. And I'm going to fill this track with notes, and by pressing the caps lock key, I can actually just hold down the Q key to fill it, like this. And I want this first note to play normally, but the next one should have an offset of 2 like this, the next one after that an offset of 4, the next one after that an offset of 6 and since this is time consuming I'm going to use my time machine to skip to the part where I'm done. 9-7-A, 9-7-C and 9-7-E. Let's hit play. And let's have a look in the sampler. And as you could see, the last 9 commands here were not used because the offset is outside of the sample. Alright, moving along. In ProTracker you have 31 samples, and if you for some reason run out of them, the 9 command can be useful as well. 
So I'll show you this by clearing the song again, but I'll keep my sample. And I'll load a sample called EX Bells. It sounds like this and looks like this. And what I'll do is I'll range all, cut it, go to my first sample, right in the beginning, you can actually mark it like this, and paste it. And if I zoom in on this area right here, you can see that here is the first EX piano sample. And what I'll do next is I'll take the first part of this sample, copy it and paste it, and set the volume to it to zero, like this. Now the sample sounds like this. So both samples are played, but there is a gap in between them. This is to make sure the drum loop doesn't play when you're doing your melody. So, let's create that. I'll do this in track number one, like this. And I'll put a C00 here to silence the drum loop. Then I'm going to copy this melody to the next track by using Ctrl B, selecting all these notes and going to the top, pressing Ctrl C. The block is now copied, going to the track number two, to the position number three, pressing Ctrl J to paste it. And since this is the echo or delay, I want it to be of a lower volume. So I'll put COA here and I delete the sample number to keep the volume for these notes. And let's listen how this sounds. Now let's set the speed and the tempo to fit the drum loop. If I remember correctly, it was F06 and F8F. And I'm going to put this drum loop here and I'm going to put it on position 16. And this sample needs an offset to make the drums play instantly. So 9 command and I'll check in the sampler where the drums begin. It's 9, I think 918 will be best here. So I'll put 918 and on this note I'll just put 900 to keep the offset. Let's listen. So that's how to use two samples in one. Now let me show you one last trick. I'm going to load the 9 command module and it's our old drum loop that we created earlier. It sounds like this. And the trick here is that you can use this offset with another command as well. If you put 9 1 B before these notes instead, you can actually go with like the C command and I'm going to fade this out by putting 3 2 1 A five like this. But you also need to remove the sample number from these notes like this. And if you're using different samples in the same track you also need to define what sample to offset here. So sample number one in this case. Let's listen how this sounds. And that's it. So thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment and I'll see you in episode seven.